Hello, I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. We're going to start off with some of the numbers released late last week on the pace of harvest and the pace of planting of the safrina crop. So this comes from IMEA, and just to show you here, right now we are um, above the five-year average on the harvest pace at 31.82%, and a year ago at this time we were just barely below 5%. Again, a lot of that was on planting delays that made the harvest delay so late. But with a rapid harvest in Mato Grosso of the soybeans, we've also seen a pretty rapid planting of the safrina um, corn. You can see that right now we're at 26.7% planted, whereas a year ago we were sitting about 2.1% planted. Now these numbers have gone up over the weekend. Again, these were released at the end of last week, but it just gives us an overall perspective on where we are with this crop. Very, very different from last year is kind of the main story. Now, what we've seen uh, since mid-January, we looked at the total precipitation in last week's video. Let's just bring it up to speed here, looking at this standard precipitation index. And you can just notice that much of our northern and central growing areas, we've, we've come back closer to average, but overall more of a, a drier bias on things. And this is what's allowed for the rapid harvesting and planting of the crop. We've then seen better rains in southern Brazil here over that same time period. Now, let's look a little bit farther south in Argentina, and let's look back again, January 16th through the 25th, and that was where that frontal boundary stalled out, really well predicted by the models here, and uh, produced some very, very heavy precipitation over this region. I'm gonna wait a little bit longer before I do an NDVI analysis, uh, just due to cloud cover as of late, and plus I wanna see what the new numbers look out from the Buenos Aires Grain Exchange so I can understand how much this improved the quality of the crop. But if we look down a little bit farther here, this is just showing us that this really made a dent on that longer term drought that was in that area. But remember, when you're in drought and then get six, seven, eight inches of rain all at once, um, much of that is runoff. It does not go to cure the longer term drought stresses. And you can see as you get up into Paraguay here, northern Argentina and Paraguay, that from December 26th through January 25th, that was an area that saw a lot uh, of extensive drought with extremely hot temperatures. Now let's also go over to one of our favorite sites here. This is the World uh, Ag Weather site. And let's just look at a few different areas. Uh, we're looking here, first of all, at Mato Grosso, where they grow a lot of corn. And you can see lately some of the rains that have come back in there. So this was the dry time period that allowed for a lot of the harvest here. But lately, there's been some better precipitation coming to that area. Let's go east over to Goyas. And again, we can see that even though it was drier during this time period of harvest, we've seen some better rains coming in. And overall, this is not a very large deficit. Down south, let's go to Parana, and heavy rains as of late have helped to bring us back up, but we're still looking at about a six inch deficit over the last 60 uh, days. And if we look even all the way down into far southern Brazil, into Rio Grande do Sul, even some of the heavy rains we did pick up here over the last you know, week and a half or so, while they've made an improvement still over a six inch deficit here, when your total precipitation is only adding up to five inches, that's a bigger deficit than you have uh, in, in, in total precipitation. So we're just gaining some perspective and I'll just do this real quick, come all the way down. I like to go to Cordoba. And again, that's those big rainfall events. And since then it's gone dry. We wanna ask ourselves, how long is it gonna stay dry there? Part of that answer is looking at the flow of the atmosphere. Let's let this readjust here, there we go. And we can see pretty healthy monsoonal flow coming over the Amazon and curling right here. There's a big ridge over Bolivia that forces the turn of this flow. So we're gonna to expect to see this area with good precipitation. But if you look over here in Eastern Brazil, the flow's coming out of the subtropics. Maybe if I just showed it to you this way, and look at this, uh, relative humidity. Yeah, you can see that that air coming in through here is drier. So we're gonna look for wet conditions in through central and southern Brazil. Big high pressure cells sitting here over Argentina. We wanna know how long that's gonna last. So we look at the next 10 days. Again, that's where we got the wettest conditions. Just for reference, this is Sao Paulo over toward Minas Gerais into Goiás, southern Mato Grosso and Mato Grosso do Sol. But we see drier conditions despite some rains coming through this part of Argentina. I'll show you that in a second. They're gonna largely be scattered. So we've gone back over to favoring more higher pressure and drier conditions in this area. And now you can see the effect. The better monsoonal flow is here, the drier air coming in through there. And that's why we see drier conditions in Brazil's far northern growing areas. Pretty good forecast, I think, here by the 12Z uh, ECMWF. Now, let's go look and see how each individual day kind of pans out here. We're starting this on Monday evening, getting into early Tuesday morning. So what you see is we play through Tuesday and into Wednesday. 
You, you see it there? That's where the best flow is coming through. There's too much dry air here and high pressures in place down here of Argentina. So we're looking at this area of having the best chance of picking up some rain through the middle of this week. As we then play this out toward Thursday and into Friday, there is, let me just take you back there one step, there is a chance for some scattered storms coming in on Thursday afternoon, stretching north to south across Argentina. These are going to be scattered in nature. So those places that went over dry uh, are going to still uh, possibly have pockets of, of drought conditions continuing in that area. But as we play this on into Friday, that front slides, as you see here, into southern Brazil, increasing the rainfall chances there. And then going from Friday into this upcoming weekend, that's where we continue to see the wettest weather. Do you notice it? It's right in through this corridor with more normal monsoonal flow by the time we get into Saturday and Sunday. So high pressure comes back in to Argentina as we begin early next week and the heavier rains start to press a bit farther to the north. So we keep seeing these bigger, longer lasting high pressure cells coming in and sticking around in Argentina, continue to put stress on that crop. So just so we understand, extremely dry through December, much of January, very wet from about mid-January to the 20th, 23rd, 24th, somewhere around there. And then most of all, after that, it's gone over to a drier pattern. This means that Argentina has really been kind of rocked back and forth in terms of precipitation. And we can see that if we just look at the ensembles as well. This is the next week. So again, there's that drier air coming in here. We're wetter in through this region. But as we let this one week sliding window move forward, we see that the models as we get out here toward the February 4th through 10th time period, and then letting this slide out there till we get out all the way fully into week two, which will be right about here, which is the 7th through the 14th. The models are picking up on better precipitation here with a drier bias south and a drier bias into Argentina as well. This would be good rain on the newly planted Safrina crop in the north and in the east, but our concern still comes back to um, Argentina. We've talked a lot about La Nina, and this is just what tends to happen when there's a La Nina. Argentina tends to struggle with moisture. Now from here, let's go talk about the interplay between the fading La Nina and maybe the more important factor now, which is the MJO. Last week on Thursday, I felt pretty confident that we were gonna see the MJO emerge somewhere over in phase four or five in the next week or two. But the models uh, have uh, trended a bit farther back to the, you know, the west over the Indian Ocean, giving us phase three. Now, if it comes out into phase three and then slowly progresses into phase four or five, this is what we have to be on the lookout for. Phase three, no real strong correlations, but phase four and phase five tend to be drier north. So let me give you the big what if here. If the models do properly capture this coming out into phase three and then transitioning in its normal eastward progression over toward phase four and five, that's near, this would go from the Indian Ocean to Australia, that's that eastward project, uh, projection then right now the longer range forecast is too wet in this area, all right? Because we know that history would tell us that if the MJO is the more dominant player, that, excuse me, we would see a favorable pattern for more high pressure, drier conditions in this area. And I'm worried, you talk, saw me present this uh, last week, I'm worried about this area seeing an early shutdown in the monsoon because of the fading La Nina. So right now, I see this possibly overdone on moisture and maybe closer to average, maybe even drier than average as we cut into Mato Grosso. What about Southern Brazil and Argentina? Well, we know that Argentina tends to favor drier conditions, even when the La Nina fades like this. So let's keep an eye on this pattern overall, but this is your February 18th to March 18th outlook from the brand new long range European model, which just came out this evening. So we've got a lot to keep, uh, keep an eye on here, including the strength of this monsoon, the drought in Argentina, and I'll watch it this week and give you another update on Thursday. Appreciate your attention. Thank you.